Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Book Trib live chat. We are here today with the amazing Kristen Cast. Um, as I'm sure as you remember, last week we had PC on, um, but today we're working with the uh, second half of the best-selling author duo behind the House of Night series. Um, and she is here to answer all your other burning questions about Redeemed and Zoe and Nefred and everyone. Um, and as you may have heard, Redeemed is debuting at number three on the New York Times Children's Bestseller list. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. It's number three on the Publishers Weekly list, number six on Wall Street Journal, and number seven on USA Today. Truly amazing. Um, and if you don't know, the House of Night is an international phenomenon. Uh, it reached number one on U.S., German, and U.K. bestseller list. It's remained a fixture on the New York Times bestseller list for over 160 weeks. Uh, there are more than 20 million copies of the books in print, um, and it sold more than 40 <laughs> countries. And the movie rights have been optioned by the people who put together the Resident Evil franchise. Yes. So the whole House of Night fandom is buzzing with excitement over here. Um, now, Kristen herself has uh, standalone stories in several anthologies, as well as editorial credits. And currently, she's working on her first standalone series, which is a Yay. super mystery right now. We don't know what it's about yet. I'm Very sorry, excited I to find out. <laughs> And she's also working on new items for the My House of Night clothing line. So go to myhouseofnight.com uh, and you can see all the goodies there. In addition, today we are giving away goddess gifts. They're gift bags that were inspired by four of favorite uh, House of Night characters with goodies from Sinful Colors, Jamberry, Sure, Sure. Chrisley, excuse me, Chrisley, Baby Blue Designs, Four <laughs> Strange Women, and 21 Drops. So after the chat, head on over to booktrip.com and enter to win. And remember uh, to sign up at Booktrip to get your latest on live chats, giveaways, original content, and more. One more thing, if uh, you're interested in checking out more about House of Night, go to houseofnightseries.com. You can follow Kristen on Twitter at KCastAuthor, like her Facebook page at Kristen Cast Author. Um, and in a moment, when Kristen appears back on the screen, we're going to uh, welcome her to our chat. Please stand by. She'll be with us in a second. Hello. You're back. Hi. Oh, oh my gosh, I don't know what happened to me. I just disappeared. It was crazy. Okay, I'm sorry. Back. It's okay. magic. No, I'm it's here. fine. So please, everyone, help me welcome <laughs> Kristen Cast. Yay. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. I'm so excited. Now, before we get going with some viewer questions, I want to ask you um, what's your absolute favorite thing about the House of Night series? What is it? I think my absolute favorite thing is like the reality of the characters. And when I say that, I mean, like, um, I think that we, well, my mom mainly, since she writes the first draft of all the novels, uh, does a really good job of like putting real things that actual teenagers are going through into the novels. I mean, not that teenagers are vampires, but you know, they could be, who knows? Um, <laughs> Metaphorically, <laughs> some of them are. Right? Exactly. So I think that we do a really good job representing what's actually happening in high school. And, you know, maybe some high schools are saving the world. We appreciate you. Thank you. I think they might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's an excellent answer. And, but how does it feel? I mean, it's been so long, 10 years, you know, uh, 12 yeah. novels. What is it? 16 books altogether. What does it feel like now that it's over? Oh, my gosh. It's so sad. I cried like... Those of you who have read Redeemed, when you started crying, I started crying, and then I did not stop crying for the rest of the book. Like, I was sitting on the couch, and I told um, the boyfriend, I was like, you know, the House of the Night is ending, and it's going to be fine. You know, I've known how long it's going to be for years now, and I'm not going to have a problem. And then I started reading Redeemed, and it, like, set in that, oh, my gosh, this is the last one. And I just was a blubbering mess. So oh. it's very bittersweet. Like, I'm excited to move on to new projects, but at the same time, like like you said, it's been 10 years, and that's a really long time to stay with the same characters. And I'm going to miss yeah, them. Yeah, and especially 
especially since you know you're so young and this it's been yeah, 10 years and you've you know you. grown up over the past <laughs> 10 years <laughs> um, and already the series and does it feel like it's really a part of you like you know it's in your oh, veins totally you know for sure mm -hmm. like I started writing um I started helping my mom with these whenever I was 19 and now of course I'm almost 30 so um it's been my whole like from the point when I really was an adult like my whole early adult life has been spent with the house tonight and I know that a lot of our readers can relate that their whole early adulthood was spent in this world and so like them I'm very sad to see it go but I have grown a lot mm. I think I've become a better writer thank god oh my god I was not very good when I started <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, here, we're going to go on to some viewer questions now. We have Beth here, and she asks, which character in the House of Night series do you feel you can most relate to? Well, Beth, thank you for your question. Um, <laughs> whenever we started with the series, uh, Zoe was actually based on me whenever I was in high school, like very loosely based on me. Like, we have the same idiosyncrasies, like, I am a huge brown pop in Count Chocula and Pisketti. Oh my God, Pisketti! I even have a dance. But um, over time, she became her own character. Like I went to high school when my mom and my grandpa taught at the same high school, so nobody ever dated oh, wow. me. Yeah, right. It was not good. <laughs> um, so I did not have her boy problems at all. But as you can tell, we're both, you know, brown. I have Native American heritage, just like Zoe. So she's the one that I feel like I can most relate to in the early books. But then, like I said, mm -hmm. she grows into her own person and, you know, she becomes Zoe Redbird. Yeah. Well, Deirdre says here, um, she wants to know, I mean, I'm sure there are mothers and daughters who read your books together. What do they say? You know, what do what do they get out of reading it with their daughters? What do mothers get? What do daughters get out of reading it with their moms? Is it does it help them kind of talk about some of the tough topics that teens go through that you discuss in your books? I think so. Um, one of my favorite things is whenever we're at different events, uh, people will come up to us and the majority of time it's mother daughter duos who come up to us and say, you know, we didn't really have a relationship until we started reading this series together. And then we have the opportunity to to connect and if oh, our wow. books yeah it's like amazing and if our books have brought that to anyone I mean I just it just like blows me away because I am mm -hmm. so honored that we can you know provide that for people and that we can be an avenue to get families to talk to each other again oh that's really wonderful it really is now Beth has another question here. She says, do you have a favorite book from the House of Night series? My favorite book is Linovia's Vow, which is one of the novellas. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love it because not only is it beautifully written, it's like it's such a good story. But you can pick it up without having read all of the <laughs> other books. Because I know, like, for some people, a 12-book series mm -hmm. is extremely Kristen will be back with us in a moment. She's refreshing her page. It seems that her internet is a little bit spotty where she is right now. And, uh, keep submitting your questions. You're back.
Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi, hi, hi. Can you hear us? <laughs> hi, Kristen. Can you hear us? Oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have been able to hear you. I don't We're back. know. I'm sorry. Hi. God, the internet hi. at this hotel is just like totally back. bogus. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. Well, oh my we've gosh. been waiting. Yes. Welcome. Now, I have another good question from Beth. She's got some good ones today. She says, how has the relationship Beth, with your, your mother evolved over the years, especially from a business standpoint? She's on the ball. Well, um, we get this question all the time. I know, right? Like, good job, Beth. Um, we get this question mm. all the time. And it, it's strange because my mom and I have never been any different. Like, it's always been just the two of us. So. I, I mean, I've gotten older and as I got older, she became like more of my like best friend as opposed to just like my mom. Um, mm -hmm. but so we've always had a really close relationship. And from a business standpoint, I think that we have both, like I've learned a lot from her, not only from her successes, but you know, from any mistakes that she's made along the way. And I think that we have a great business relationship. We go to a lot of mm -hmm. business luncheons with each other and business <laughs> shopping. Um, so <laughs> I think that it's fantastic. And I'm so glad I get to work on this with her because I think my mom is awesome. Yeah, well, she is. <laughs> now, here's another question we have here from Kylie. She says, free will and friendship are two very strong themes in your books. And how important do you think these two are in real life? Oh my gosh, I think that they're they're totally important. Um they're right up there with like honesty, you know. I I mm -hmm. can't imagine I mean, I really can't imagine not having free will one first of all because, you know, that would just be horrible. And um friendship mm -hmm. There's really besides the relationship that you can have with your parents and like your siblings, um I don't think that there's really any other more important relationship that you can have with another human being like my um the boyfriend and i we are best uh -huh. friends i'm best friends with him i'm best friends with my mom so i think that it that, like friendship is synonymous with love i mean i have one friend that i think is my best friend in the whole wide world and i love her and i would do anything to protect her so i think that it's just i i mean i feel like it's amazingly important because without another person to, you know, share parts of your life with, I feel like life would be kind of empty. Mm-hmm. Mm, definitely. Now, um, I want to give... <laughs> now, Lara here, um, she says, can you talk a little bit about how the House of Night merch, uh, how that part of the business got started? Um, oh my gosh, it really got started so long ago, but it really, I, I kind of like stepped up and decided to do something with it in the last, really just like last year. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, how did it get started? I think that mom and I just really let, like, I am a huge, uh, Whovian, like I am a huge Doctor Who fan and like Star Trek and Star Wars. And so I have mm -hmm. like all these, you know, pajamas and t-shirts and like bobblehead, really nerdy just crap, I guess you could say, <laughs> but I love it and I cherish it. And so I, we wanted to bring that kind of, that same kind of thing to people who are in love with the mm -hmm. House of Night. So if they want to, you know, rock their House of Night shirt, like you can totally show that you represent, 
your love of the book series without having to, you know, carry around your book and be like, oh, this book series is great. You should read this. But like represent it, Mm -hmm. you know, on your clothing or your car or wherever. So that's how it got started. Kind of. I can't remember like the initial, like, bam, we should do this. I can't even remember that. Oh, my God, I'm getting old. I don't know. (laughs) Well, Laura has another question here. She says, what are some activities that you like to do when you're not co-authoring the House of Night series or writing your new series? I'm probably like the most boring person ever. I really like, I like reading and I like watching. I have certain shows that I like to watch, (laughs) but I also love to go like on hiking trails with my dogs. Um, I have two Frenchies and a black mm-hmm. lab and so we you know take the frenchies and put them in their little coats and i have like a backpack that i put one of the frenchies in <laughs> like a dog backpack because he's the laziest dog i've ever met and so we go like on different hiking trips and i like to you know just explore outside but i say explore i mean like in 45 minute increments not like all day long <laughs> outside if mm-hmm. i'm going to be outside all day long i'd rather kind of be stationary <laughs> So, you know, being outside, reading, and watching my shows are the things I like to do. That <laughs> I do not sound very interesting reading? at all. <laughs> Look, I mean, oh my reading, God, right going now outside reading. with animals, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right now I'm reading uh, Karen Rose, and I always get her titles mixed up. I think I'm reading Die for Me by Karen mm-hmm. Rose, and I absolutely love it. And I'm waiting for the next Scott Sigler book to come out. It comes out in April, and I've pre-ordered my copy from Barnes & Noble, and I am ready, Scott Sigler. Mm-hmm. I feel like I stalk him because <laughs> I really, really like him. I love you, Scott Sigler. Okay, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> that's excellent. Um, so what are your shows? I'm, like, blushing, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have Doctor Who. <laughs> I just started, Mm -hmm. like, and I say just started, I just started watching Nashville, and that is a really good show. Um, I love Mm -hmm. Scandal, but I'm not caught up, so don't give me any Mm -hmm. spoilers. Um, Grace Point, and I really watched Grace Point because David Tennant is in it, and he was a doctor Mm -hmm. from Doctor Who. Right? No spoilers. And um, Did you watch, what was it called, Broadbridge? uh, Boyfriend Loves the... No, I broad church or broad whatever it was. Yeah, no, I didn't watch that one, and I watch you so bad, but I'm afraid it's gonna spoil like what I'm watching right now. So I haven't watched it. It will, yeah. <laughs> but the boyfriend and I watched the UFC fighter <laughs> show together, whatever that is called, the ultimate, mm-hmm. the fighting. I don't know the one with the women. Man, those are some scary women, but they're also pretty and like feminine. It's very confusing. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, Michael wants to know if you can tell us anything about your series that you're working on. I thought I'd slip it in there in case, you know, you can reveal any details. I can't really say that much other than um, right now my agent's working on a five-book contract for it. Um, it's I think it's super awesome. It has, uh, you know, murder and suspense, of course, but then it also has, like, uh, Greek mythological elements. Like, my hero is the son of the Furies, and he's an immortal warrior oh, for the underworld, and he's super sexy. I'm sure you'll appreciate that, Michael. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> I'll have more information probably, like, on Monday, like, next week. So if you just check out Mm -hmm. my social media pages and my website, like, everything will be on there. And then I'll have, you know, I'll have a better answer for you, Michael, next week. But thank you for Mm -hmm. asking. We'll update him. Um, So I want to know, going back to Redeemed a little bit, what – like, where do you see Zoe? We asked your mom this, uh, but we, I want to know what you think, where you see Zoe in five to ten years. Oh, my gosh. That's so hard. 
Because really, when I think about <laughs> Zoe and the Nerd Herd, I think like 50 years or something into the future. So, oh, okay. oh my gosh. I would well, where say, do you see her in 50 years in the future? Yeah, but oh, I feel like she's totally high priestessing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that she's like completely redone uh, like the structure of the House of Night and, you know, mm -hmm. did away with all of the Neferet things, like all the stuff that Neferet mm -hmm. had her fingers in. Um, and, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I see her with uh, well, of course, she's with Stark, but I totally think that she has a human companion. Because in 50 oh, years, that's long enough for Heath to come back. Yeah, I mean, Heath is, to mm -hmm. you know, that's a long time in human years. So Heath is totally going to come back, and they're going to be together. Because I love him. Well, I mean, she loves him. We, we both love him. <laughs> we love him. Um, so here's something that's a little off the regime path, but Alex says your mom talked about Spike being her boyfriend. And do you have anything to say yeah. about Buffy and Spike's awesomeness? <laughs> I mean, Spike is my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And that woman, I swear <laughs> to God, Spike is my boyfriend. And I, I am obsessed with, with Buffy and Spike. <laughs> I feel like Buffy should have just like unclenched long before and just, you know, ha she should have been with Spike way before she actually, you know, was, and then she was angry about it and then they were happy. It was just a mess. So she just should have relaxed and been with him. But he's my <laughs> boyfriend, Phyllis, Christine, if you're watching, mm -hmm. mom, <laughs> Spike's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> So Wendy wants to know what an average day look like looks like to you. And I know right now you're front, you're in Vancouver, you're on book tour. Um, but what does a normal day when you're back home? What does that look like? Um. So well, normally, I really, you know, I get up and I do anything that needs to be done with like the clothing line or my social media, and I answer like any emails and stuff like that. Like, just boring work stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'll normally, like, go to the gym and get something to eat and then come home and I'll write. And I'll probably write for, like, five or six hours. And then mm -hmm. I'll eat dinner. It's like a regular – to me, it's like a regular job. I just do it at a different in – in my house at a different part of the day. So I just, like, do it in the middle of the day as opposed to, like, starting in the morning because I don't like to – I don't have any kids yet, and I don't like to wake up early, and I know that the second I have children, that's like the end of my sleeping in ever again in my life. <laughs> so I want to get all my sleeping in done now so that when I have children, I am not mad at myself for never sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Um, Chloe here, she yeah. wants to know who your favorite YA authors are. Who, um, you know, who did you read when you were younger, uh, YA or not? What, what was your favorite book when you were younger? I, um, oh, my God. So when I was younger is when Gossip Girls was on a show yet, and I was obsessed with Gossip Girls. I always made my mom, like, take me to Barnes & Noble, or actually it was Borders back then. Golly, poor Borders. Mm -hmm. May it rest in peace. Um, borders. take me to Borders to get the new Gossip Girls book. And I was obsessed with this series by Lynn, I'm going to butcher her last name, Ewing? I don't, E-W-I-N-G, mm. I think. And I am pretty sure it was called, like, oh, gosh, now I've forgotten, Daughters of the Night or something like that. But there were, like, a trillion of them. And I, oh, I had my face stuck in them all the time. I loved those books. And But ever since starting the House of Night series, I don't read a young adult just because I don't like to read in the same genre that I'm writing in. Um, so those mm -hmm. were, those were like Cecily Vaughn, however you say her last name. Z mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and Lynn Ewing were like my two all time favorite and they were like girly books. So gosh, I'm such a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were really good though. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so did you always know you wanted to be a writer? When did that kick in for you? I, it, like, actually wanting to be a writer probably happened 
I don't know, within the last year, a year and a half. I, when I first mm -hmm. went to college, I wanted to work at the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases. So I feel wow. like, and then I started taking biology classes in college, and I realized, oh my God, this is super, super hard. And at the same time, the House of Night was starting to take off, and so I ha kind of had to make, I had to make a decision. You know, do I want to, um, you know, stick with my mom and pursue this career, or do I want to stay in in school and totally focus on that. And so I chose House of Night. Um, but I really did not think that I wanted to be a writer until mm -hmm. like I started working on the book that I just finished uh, because I had, like you said earlier, I had a couple s stories in anthologies and I did not think that they were good. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I don't, I'm not talented at this. I can't, like, this is not something I was born with. Mm -hmm. um, and so only after I sat down and actually started writing did I realize, hey, I can do this. Like, this is not horrible. This doesn't suck. Like, more than yeah. just my mom like this. So then I realized, <laughs> you know, I can do this. This is what I want to do. And it just, so it really was actually very recently. But I'm glad I made that realization. Oh, wow. Yeah, it sounds incredible. I mean, you just, it, your future seems incredibly bright, definitely. Um, thank you. I, I think thank now, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mia Gibbs is talking about here about turning the house of night into a movie. Um, I want to know who you would cast as Zoe being that, you know, she is based oh on you loosely. Who would you cast if you could, if you had your pick? Um, well, first, I have to say, if this is the Mia Gibbs who, like, posts on my Twitter and one fabulous Saint Friday on my Facebook the other day, you are so freaking pretty, and she does the best job with, like, she <laughs> dresses as, you know, has, like, Zoe tattoos and stuff. I mean, you're fantastic. So thank you, Mia, for watching this, if you're the same Mia Gibbs. If not, I apologize. Um, you know, the series has been optioned for movies um, since around, like, mm -hmm. 2000 or 2008 or something like that um, but by a different mm -hmm. producer and back then I knew exactly you know who I wanted to be in all the roles but now you know it's been so long and there's a whole different group of young actors that I don't even know and I would love for it to be like how Harry Potter was like you didn't know the those main characters so I would love it for be, for it to be like unknowns Mm -hmm. But I've always thought that Angelina Jolie should be never at. I don't know. I, she probably wouldn't ever because she was just Maleficent. I mean, she was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I feel like normally actors aren't, like, in roles that are very similar. But, um, God, she would just – I would just die if she if she was. Cause I, feel I like could she'd totally be amazing. see it. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Now, we're about at time here, and I want to thank you so much for talking with us today. We had a really fabulous time, um, and I know your fans did too. Um, so thank you again, Kristen. Um, and remember, follow her on Twitter at uh, KCastAuthor. Like her Facebook page, Kristen Cast Author, um, and keep up with everybody on the House of Night Series Facebook page and HouseOfNightSeries.com. Check out the merch at myhouseofnight.com. What else do we have to say? If you're in Vancouver, <laughs> head over to Chapters Burnaby tonight, 7 o'clock. You can talk to Kristen in person, Kristen and PC in person. Um, thank you again. Everyone, if you haven't already, go out and buy Redeemed and the rest of the series, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.